Okay, so we're coming toward the completion of the rocker box here. So what we need to do is cut the lower board. You could just measure it and cut it that way. What I'll typically do is, for the sake of speed, I don't even cut it on the table saw because I'm gonna flush cut it with a router bit after I glue it up. So I just take the rocker box itself, I set it down on the piece of three quarter inch plywood, and then I move it in about, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch at the edges. And then I'll just take a pencil and I will draw the outline on the back and the other side. Then I'll move the rocker box. Now we'll take the handy jigsaw, because it's a really quick and efficient tool. And I'm just going to go barely on the outside of my line. Start over here. And there we have the uh, bottom of our ground board. So now what we'll do is glue it up. Now I haven't taken the time to adjust the clamps or anything like that, because keep in mind, after we glue this, I'm just gonna throw maybe four clamps on it, let it begin to sit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put two, four, six, eight more wood screws through it. Because again, the bottom is gonna be covered up with formica, nobody would ever see those screws anyway and it gives us a huge mechanical advantage, a screwed and glued joint. So uh, that's why I do that. So I'm gonna grab the glue. I wasn't even really planning on doing this, but we might as well. So here we go. I'm just gonna spread a little on my brush. Now this is one that you wouldn't have to use, Type Bond 3. It is quite a bit more expensive than the other types of tight bond or Elmer's or other types of wood glue because we don't need that extremely long open time that we do whenever we're gluing up those box joints. So really any type of wood glue is going to suffice on these. But I do like the tight bond 3 the most. It has the, makes a stronger joint than the other types of glue. Now I will typically put the better piece of plywood facing toward the top of the rocker box, but it really doesn't matter because we're just gonna paint the inside black anyhow. So you'll never really see the grain, but I don't know, it's just a more of an OCD thing than anything else for me. Alright, All right, so I think I like this side down. Just kind of line it up roughly. Make sure that you're hanging over just about a sixteenth of an inch or slightly more on each side so that we have full coverage. And now, I'll take four clamps, two, three, and my fourth one's over there. I just want to prove to you that I can count. This is what happens when you have an 18-month-year-old and you're counting everything in the world out because you're praying that she's going to be a mechanical engineer, so you want to make sure she's a good counter. Okay, so we're clamped up. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill my four holes for my uh, screws that we're going to use to add the extra pressure. I'll grab my handy dandy tri-square. I'm just making my eight marks. This isn't critical to do either because again, this is going to be 
covered up with formica on the bearing surface. So no one would ever know that they're not perfectly, perfect distances apart. But I don't know. It's just something I can't help myself. I have to. I would know it is myself. So Let's go with 330 seconds here. Now I'm going to trade my drill bit for a countersink. If you don't have a countersink, just use like a Forstner bit. Something to uh, make sure that the screw head is just below flush. Okay. Now we will go back with our Phillips head bit. And again, I'm just using drywall screws. flush cut these sides then we'll uh, drill a hole in the middle for our pivot point bolt and uh, then we'll round the edges fill any gaps that you have from imperfections anywhere in the finger joints or imperfections in the wood sand her down and we are done with the rocker so the last video that we're going to show on the rocker box here is just simply cutting the formica I want to show this because I don't believe that I showed it whenever making the mirror box I just showed how we laminate the Formica to the top. So in this series, the Rockerbox series, I will show you how I cut the Formica and I won't bother with making the video on laminating it to the bottom of the rocker. I assume we all know that we're going to take this piece of Formica I'm cutting, square it up to the bottom of the Formica, apply contact cement, laminate it down. It's that simple. So what I've done is the rocker box is just over 21 and a half inches wide. It's a square, 21 and a half by 21 and a half. So just over 21 and a half. So I made this just smaller than 21 and a half, um, like a 16th of an inch smaller than 21 and a half, 21 and 7 sixteenths. So uh, I'm just gonna cut it freehand with a circular saw. We'll never see it again anyway because it's underneath the rocker box. All I'm basically doing is covering up the bottom and this is going to be the surface that our PTFE rides on. Now regarding the Formica that I use, a lot of people like to use the FRP, the fiber, fiberglass reinforced plastic. I, I've used it with good results, so if you want to use that stuff, great. It's a little bit less expensive than this. This Formica, I have found to give me the type of motion I like. Um, it's just enough force and uh, just enough resistance. Even if you're using it for your bearings, it works really well, your altitude bearings rather. Um, now, if you want to get this exact Formica, it is 909-42 Black Sparkle. So you can get it at Lowe's. You'll typically have to special order it. They sell it in different length sheets. I usually get a 12 foot long sheet um, that'll last me a, a few telescopes. But here we're just going to cut this freehand and we'll move on to the video, next video after that. And there we have it. What I'll do now is I will take this over and I'll just block sand the corners here just to break the sharp edges. Otherwise, with the mica, you'll find that whenever you're laminating it on, you can cut your fingers up really, really easy. I've done that so many times. Um, but that's it. So tonight I will laminate that up to the bottom of the rocker box using contact cement. We have one more piece of formica to cut. I have recently started substituting um, Kydex that I've always used on the upper cage as a uh, kind of a light shroud material inside the rings. And I am now using this very Formica. Now, a lot of people might say, doesn't that weigh a lot more? No, not at all. Um, I think I pick up an extra two ounces of weight. Um, but what it does do is it provides a huge, huge level of rigidity compared to the Kydex. The Kydex is just basically flimsy plastic. This has quite a bit of substance to it. So with a 16 inch telescope, um, it's a little bit harder to install in the upper cage after you have it together, 
But I think the trade-off is well worth it because then I'm able to, on the inside, I use this on the inside, I'll paint this flat black and it looks really sharp. I think that this black sparkle finish looks really, really good, much better than the Kydex on the upper cage. And like I said, it provides so much more rigidity. Um, it's, it's unreal. I didn't come up with this. I, uh, I, I found out another telescope maker had been doing it, and I tried it a few times, and I was like, wow, this is the only way to go. So uh, anyway, I strongly recommend doing that. Otherwise, you can just use Kydex. But uh, the next video, next video, mirror cell.